Welcome to the GCN show. From Gran Canaria. Welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show. Yay! Welcome to the GCN show. This week we have got a tech special, plus Lloydie's cycling shorts and some other massive bodges. We also round up the racing news and we've got all of our usuals. Plus, we've got another round. We could have a new GCN segment. Whoa! Crumbs! I don't know what that's going to be. I don't know where Lloydie is, by the way. No, have you seen him last week? I haven't, no. It's been very quiet. Hmm. There's been some really cool tech in the news this week, but we're gonna start off with some cyclocross tech. Now, I know the season is almost drawn to a close, but there's some real significance here for the road, in particular, Paris-Roubaix. You've got to love it, Paris-Roubaix tech, Definitely. haven't you? Definitely, you've got to love yeah, it. Yeah, you have. This one starts right back at the Crossworlds in Zolder, where I went on the hunt for the elusive Dugast prototype tubular tyres, Dugast, a boutique tubular manufacturer. What these are is they are tubeless tubers, not an especially revolutionary product, but a first for Dugast and the first to keep Dugast's ethos of a cotton casing and great ride quality. Tubeless tubers mean no pinch flats and with a bit of sealant, how much, Matt? About 20 grams. Say 20 really? grams of sealant. Yeah. You can protect yourself from sharp object punches as well, the ultimate. Yeah, it does sound like the perfect Paris-Roubaix tyre, doesn't it? And at the moment they don't make a road version, but Lars Bohm, according to Cycling Tips, has put himself down for a couple of these pairs. And he, you'll remember, was the first guy to run 30 CY tyres at Paris-Roubaix, so maybe this is the start of something new. Yeah, I think we'll definitely see some more unbranded tyres at Paris-Roubaix, but one thing you won't see is this. I'm here at the London Bike Show for a very special tech of the week. I've been mooching around for the last couple of hours and I found this. I'm with Andrew from Headcase. Hello, man. Nice to meet you. Uh, you've nice been very kind. You. To, we've got this amazing product. Here a foldable is. cycling helmet. Andrew, take it away. Talk us through the foldable helmet. Well, there's, there's all sorts of folding helmets around now, but this one is a little bit different because it does actually fold completely flat, as okay. you can see there. Wow. Uh, and it does that because what's really cool is it's because we've made it out of this flexible material called end case. Uh, you can see here it's actually quite squashy and flexible. Fantastic. Andrew, thanks very much. No worries, my pleasure. Watch this space for the foldable helmet. You know what, Matt? I think you might be right. I'm not entirely sure that is going to be seen at Pirate Bay this year. Oh, but you never know. In the future. What well, maybe? Yes. Now, last week we showed you a really cool little Kickstarter project. This week we've got another one for you, and in fact another one that has already met its funding target. It's not hard to see why, because this is a wearable power meter. Mm. And why not? You can have power meters already on your cranks, chain rings, bottom brackets, hubs, anywhere else I've forgotten. Pedals. Pedals, indeed. So, so why not somewhere else? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this one is really, really neatly done. There's a pressure sensor that sits underneath your cleat and it has an accelerometer on your shoe. Yeah, really, really cool. No word on accuracy, but we'll see. Do you think it'll still work if you can't clip in? <laughs> Don't know what you're looking at me for, mate. You've had your own problems over the last <laughs> few weeks. That is a good point. Now, last week in Tech of the Week, we talked about the future of 3D printing in the bike industry. Lo and behold, a couple of days after, I see a post on the Radivist about Melbourne-based bike company Bastion Cycles. And it's a really great little concept, actually. You can make a custom-built bike by 3D printing titanium lugs mm. and then weaving carbon tubes unique to each bike. So in theory, you could pretty much ask for anything and they could print it, weave it, glue it, and then post it to you in four weeks flat, so they say. Print it, weave it, glue it, post it, wrap it. It's an amazing looking bike as well. And ride it afterwards. Yeah, all those. They do look good. Check it out. That is pretty flash. It's worth a look. It's now time for cycling shorts. Time now for cycling shorts. And first up, Good Samaritan Mark Cavendish the other day stopped to help a stranded cyclist mend a tube the other day in rather cold and wintry Tottenham in London. And the moment was captured for Twitter by a passerby, which you can see just here. But later on the same day, the recipient of that kindness, which you must admit, you've got to take your hat off to Cav for this one. She tweeted, it's Fran Cutts. He's an absolute hero. I was struggling with cold hands to get the tie back on, and he even offered me a lift home. 
So that is that is pretty cool. What a legend! What a legend! What a nice guy. I wonder how long it took him to change the tube. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> oh, but he's pinched the tube as well. Do you reckon he's, quite, do you reckon he's, do you reckon he's nifty? With the, I reckon with the tube he's change? pretty quick. He looked, he looked like he had the style right, but uh, but fair play. I, again, it's worth mentioning if you're out and you see somebody stranded. Just shout and see if they're fine. I mean, it's uh, part of cycling etiquette, isn't it? That is true. And he was off duty in a tracksuit. He wasn't even wearing lycra. Yeah. Fair play, Mark. That is proper cool. Very cool. Anyway, in more great feel-good news, Chris Bookmans, the Lotto Sudal rider who had a terrible crash in the Vuelta last year where he sustained life-threatening injuries, actually went back to Spain and completed the stage of the race that he crashed out on. Again, another legend. Congrats, Chris, and hope to see you back. Racing very soon. That's a really nice shot, that isn't it? He's looking pretty fit actually in that picture. Yeah, really how to ripped see him back. Is, his, is his leg? I know. Presumably they're both ripped, but the one we can see, hopefully he's in good shape. They're certainly been working hard on his left leg anyway. Yeah, now some more feel good crash news. Uh, Adriano Malori, who is the world time trial silver medalist and Movistar team member, who has unfortunately still been in hospital in Buenos Aires since he crashed at the Tour de San Luis, which must be what, four weeks ago yeah, now, I guess? Here, yeah. Fortunately, he's now able to be transferred to a Spanish hospital close to his home in Pamplona, uh, where he's going to continue his recovery, and we wish him well. Absolutely. Best of luck. The US Pro Challenge will not be run this season, after unfortunately losing its financial backing at the end of last year. Now, Sean Hunter, the race CEO, is hoping to get the race back on in 2017, but using a different model, this time a race ownership one, rather than relying on a single financial backer, as they have done in the past. And I, for one, really hope that race does see the light of day. Absolutely, yeah. Online retailer Wiggle have acquired previous competitor Chain Reaction in a merger that's going to see massive annual revenues of around 300 million pounds. That's pretty punchy. It is. And although Chain Reaction is the biggest online bike store, Wiggle has the higher revenues. The question from all of this is, will it actually benefit the end consumer? Worth noting that this deal still has to pass regulatory approval here. I think there's a bigger question here. What are they going to call it? Good point, Si. Wayne reaction? Chiggle? I just can't top that. Maybe, I think, yeah, Chiggle, but Wayne reaction is going to be the CEO. That'd be cool. Maybe he just changes it. He probably will after you that. Would, I mean, you would. You, you can have that would. for free, guys. Just, yeah. just call us later. Now, in all seriousness, right, this does actually have pretty serious uh, global implications yeah. for the bike industry. Like, the two uh, brands have already got such big buying power, the industry has had to change to accommodate yeah. them. So this is going to be pretty significant, actually. And actually, it's actually, actually, it's happened in the same week that Giant have announced that they're changing their business model slightly and selling direct to consumers in the US. You still gotta go pick up your bike from a dealer, but you can buy it online. We'll finish Cycling Shorts this week by checking in what our excess baggage story continues from last week. Hindsight. Thanks. First off, it's Oscar Late, who was pretty on time with this one. <laughs> That's great. Thanks, man. guys. When transporting my bike, I once got charged not 1,000, not 2,000, but 70 pounds. I know, things are never cheap these days. That must have been a bitter pill to swallow, Oscar. Tough one. Yeah, now, what about this one from Earthstick, who said, the closest that I can come to that story is when I had to leave a set of Allen keys and a pedal spanner at Cypress Airport in 2014. That's brutal. Devastating. Then, Tom Levy sent this one in. Apparently, Joe Skipper, who's a pro Ironman athlete, tweeted about flying out to New Zealand last week, and the airway wanted to charge him £2,200 one way to take two bikes. Oh, God. So he got someone to come pick his, up his road bike and he wore so many clothes that he didn't pay any excess baggage. I just hope his outside layer was a hoodie for ventilation. <laughs> <laughs> He'll have been wearing several hoodies, yeah, presumably. Several, yeah. mm. Anyway, I guess the moral of this story is that actually, no, no one can beat Lee Howard's story. So he wins. Can't. And he w did win this week as well. He did so spoil he it. Wins. That's coming in a minute. Oh yeah, that's in racing news, mate. Time now for caption of the week. Now last week we had a rather, how can I put it, Strange picture of Chris Froome. It probably would have been all right if he wasn't wearing those leggings and that sort of tunic. Yeah, it was definitely one of the oddest pictures I've seen on the front of a men's magazine in a long, long time um, involving a cyclist. But anyway, the winner is Freddie Neal, who basically said, uh, quite rightly, Chris Froome practicing his most elegant cyclocross dismount. Very good. That is very good indeed. Very Get in nice. touch, Freddie, and we will send you some GCN swag. Now, this week's photograph was actually sent in by Wendy Stevens. Any relation? Not on this occasion. No relation. Can I get started? Well, uh, good luck, Cadell. Uh, you should be up against it, mate, against some uh, pretty stiff opposition there. That's pretty good. And I'm not actually Australian. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's a shame you can't comment good. with an accent. 
That was very, very good, actually. That was, that was really Again, close, bar so. set very, very high. <laughs> Thanks. Back after a couple of years' absence with a subtly changed name is the former Tour of the Mediterranean. Now, the first two stages were dominated by FDJ. They took the opening team time trial before Arnaud Demar took the bunch kick on stage two. But stage three, the very hilly stage, was won in fine solo fashion by Andre Grifko of Astana, who held on to the race lead. The final stage was actually won by Jan Backlins of AG2R. Good you team. know the UCI uh, tested 90 bikes for motors at that race, apparently. 90. Yeah, yeah, fair that, play that to them. Good to see, though. That yeah, is good to see. Absolutely. Now, over in Spain, the uh, Classic at Almeria was won by Yam Cycling's Lee Howard in what could possibly be the shortest road race of the year Ooh. in a rather swift 28 minutes and 29 seconds. That's brief. Yeah, the reason being it was supposed to be 184 kilometres, but the wind was so strong, they started the race, stopped it, restarted it, stopped it again before finally saying, sod it. We'll do a seven lap crit instead, uh, invoking the UCI's new extreme weather protocol, mm. which is quite cool. For the very first time. Yeah. I once won a race actually that got uh, cut in half, which is quite lucky because I wouldn't have won it otherwise. The entire final day. Yeah, th th we fact. lost a day. One day out of two. We certainly did. That's Ten years ago. Anyway, back to the present day. Tom. Yeah, just to link to that, Simon bravely beat first year junior Peter Kenyak, who you might recognise. <laughs> when now. I was 25. <laughs> Poor old Pete. <clears throat> And linking to more very talented riders from the Ironman, Mark Cavendish took his second overall victory at the Tour of Qatar. Cav was on fine sprint form, winning the first stage, but Alexander Kristol of Katusha was also dominant, taking stages two, four and five, a couple of them by the tiniest of margins. Actually, it was stage five. It was the narrowest of margins, the thinnest of latex, scientists have said. It was 0 0.0003 of a second separating Cav and Christoph. It's bonkers. It looks like there should be another zero in there. It does. That's tight. We could probably find room for another one. But stage three was taken by Cav's teammate, Edvald Bosenhagen. He dominated the time trial, won it by 15 seconds to take the lead. But sadly, the following day, he had a double puncture, which uh, basically curtailed any chance of the overall. Big shame for him. That's true. But you know what? Him chasing back on with 10k to go after his double puncture ranks as one of the most impressive bits of riding that I've seen in recent times. That was just, he looked so strong. It was amazing. Do you know what, chaps? I think that Edvard Bosenhagen should be the first ever recipient of the GCN Wattage Bazooka. <laughs> Sorry guys, how about that? So aren't you? It's quite, okay. a, it's quite a recoil on the old yeah, GC watch. Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. You're right behind the camera there, Mike. It's oh, got some damage. We're all right. Straight for you. <sighs> Turns out he's sitting on an umbrella. Well, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> he didn't win the race, but overall, he looks undeniably the strongest man there. So, Edvard, you are the very first winner of a very prestigious award. Yeah. Now, if you like the idea of a GCN wattage bazooka, then. I think it's fair to say we should be handing them out to you guys as yeah. well. So get in touch. You don't have to have won anything, just like Edvard, in fact, but any ride that you've done that's particularly impressive or a KOM or a personal best, let us know. Send it in, uh, either in the YouTube comments or on social media using the hashtag wattagebazooka, and you could win not only a wattage bazooka, also some GCN swag and a shout-out. And we don't necessarily need your watts output, although that's optional. Yeah. Yeah, know what's needed for a watching bazooka, which sounds weird, but you know. Yeah, just get out and smash it. Open for all, just do it. Seeing as we've got some great tech in this week's show, Hack forward slash Bodge of the Week is going to veer more towards the Bodge end of the spectrum. These are absolutely genius. Yeah, let's start off with something quite good though. Elijah Fay sent in this picture of his saddle that he has re-upholstered by himself using black ballistic Kevlar nylon fabric. Very cool, but presumably that makes pretty short work of your Lycra. Yeah, Indeed. quite a good hack though. All right, moving on, how about this from Liam? Uh, he saw a Stormtrooper bike complete with headlights, a stereo system and training wheels. I don't know whether that's a hack or a bodge or what, but that is a pretty impressive looking bike. It's actually a bodge of the first order. Star Wars fans, you'll get that. Moving on a little bit to Matty Heckeroth. Heckeroth, lost the pad on the TT bike, use a glove, better than Velcro <laughs> That cuts. looks absolutely like brilliant. That. That's pretty cool, actually. Oh, that is improvising. And then what about this one? Yeah. This is Mateus MTB, who, instead of buying an ass saber from the GCN store, has used a dustpan. 
I don't think there's much we can really say about that it's one. It's a load of rubbish. Let's move on. It's, yeah. All right, what about this one? This is possibly the most remarkable looking tandem I've Whoa. ever seen. Scenting from uh, Henning Silza. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I don't know how safe that is. It's, Words fail. It's something to be, certainly not 3D printed, it's not that's 3D for sure. Printed. Uh, and lastly, it's 3D my, bodge. My, my favourite of this week comes from John Waitman on Twitter, in fact. <laughs> uh, GCN hack, broken pedal in Holland on a cycling holiday, forced a twig into the spindle hole and taped it on. <laughs> a wonderful fusion of nature and technology there, but not too many washes, bazookas. Being I was going to say, I'm not sure how much power you can put out if a twig no. is still there. Uh, I love the simplicity of it, though. There's no clip on it, so it's interesting that it's your favourite, and I'm also surprised it's not Simon's. I mean, the engagement on that would be absolutely sort of simple, wouldn't it? Just Seamless. Like, yeah. 360 degree I engagement might, on that. I can might make one myself. To the uh, top and back. All right. Sounds good. All right. You're on, Retro Me. Time now for comment of the week. And this is a great one from Mitch Huffman under the How to Recover from Injury video. Mitch says, I wonder how many takes it took for Dan to catch that grape in his mouth. My guess is mainly because Matt seemed to really know his lines in that part. Thanks very much for that. That's good. Thanks, Mitch. Andrew Ballard commented this underneath the same video. I have now seen Matt's bum. Thanks, GCN. Actually got 10 thumbs for that. 10 thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Paul Murphy, uh, under the uh, retro versus modern video, said, Si, you had your peak down on the retro bike. Of course you went slower. And that is a good point, actually. Uh, and I looked less cool, so uh, mm. that is unfortunate. Now, we had some great comments, actually, under that video. Many of them saying that they were really, really wanted to see an accurate power meter retro versus modern video. So we will do our best to try and find a retro bike that we can stick a power meter on Good and do a really, really quantitative test. Sounds like fun. Would it be quantitative or quantitative? quantitative. It'll be, yeah. and, and qualitative as well. Yeah, all of the above. On the channel this week, on Wednesday, we have how to get from beginner to better. In heading out of a ride of three hours at an average speed of 15 miles per hour, if your aim is to break 25 miles per hour at a local short time trial. Conversely, you're going to have to spend more than three hours a week on the bike on flat roads if your aim is to complete a 100 mile hilly sportive. Yes, yeah, so identify the areas that you need to work on. Thursday, it's our top cycling mistakes and you risk losing valuable traction around corners and also giving yourself an uncomfortable ride. And that's because it's the tyres, which are the main part of the bike, which dampen road vibration and bumps. Yeah, as a rough guide, if you're around a 70 kilogram rider, tyre pressure should be for dry conditions between 90 and 100 psi and for wet conditions between 80 and 90 psi. And it's worth checking your tyre pressure pretty regularly because even without a puncture, a lot of different tyres can lose pressure over time. On Friday, we've got a day in the life at a Team Sky training camp and Saturday's Pro Bike Fix is brought to you by Dan and that's Marcel Cattell's specialised Venge Via. Tasty. Nice. Uh, Sunday is off the back and then on Monday we have another cracking maintenance Monday video. And Tuesday... Welcome to the GCN show. Back in the booth. Yeah. With a second ever wattage bazooka. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait to see what your entries are going to be like. Who's going to get it? That sounds quite uh, macabre, doesn't it? Mm. Can you, imagine you won't the, get it like the that. Pros could, you know, a few of the pros do watch our show. They might even go even harder and attack even, with even more fortitude just to be awarded a wattage bazooka. Yeah, Do we'll be watching. Are you going to get your entry in, Si? Oh, for sure, man. I've been training for this. Lloydie <coughs> bazooka. Expect Lloydie to send his in too. Hmm. Hmm. Right, it's time now for Dom's Tweet of the Week. Go for it. It's a very nice little exchange. Chad Hager started things off by saying, I think I did a pretty good job of shaving around the scars, but the blood claims otherwise. To which Simon Geschke replied, at Chad Hager, the time to grow a beard. Chad Hager, I agree, but unfortunately my brother got all of the facial hair genes in the family. I feel Chad's pain. I think my sister got all mine. Oh, that's... <laughs> Is your sister particularly bearded? No, she, she, she'll hopefully laugh it off. Is she Sorry a GCN fan? Yeah, not anymore though. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Former fan of you as well. <laughs> we'll leave you with Extreme Corner and this week... It's Matt. Welcome to a special edition of Extreme Corner starring me at the London Bike Show in the street velodrome on board this. A special bike built for this sort of stuff. It's a single freewheel, it's got a rear mech, 
cool thing about it, it has got brakes, thankfully for me, but the cool thing about it, it's got a speedo at the back, and I'm about to take part in an individual pursuit. The first, possibly the last, of my life. You got trouble! Go. No, that's impressive, mate. Where'd you finish? Uh, podium. No way. Oh, nice work. Well fair play, mate. Fair play. Now, uh, if you want to see the GCN quiz, and I suggest that you do, because not only is it good entertainment, you can also win some GCN swag. You can click just up there, and you get straight through to it. And for a fantastic Retro V modern feature, featuring this man here on a retro or bear bike that won the Vuelta, no less, click just down here. And finally, to subscribe to GCN, all you've got to do is click in the middle.